the Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actress was a shy little girl growing up in Dallas. That is, until her mom sent her to acting class. She fell in love with the theater and set her sights on showbiz. By 1973, Morgan had become a daytime star on Search for Tomorrow, and she rose to the top of prime time with Dallas and Falcon Crest. Join me for a one-on-one -on -one with Morgan Fairchild at her beautiful Los Angeles home. Morgan Fairchild's universe is stunning. The star herself designed the rose garden surrounding her elegant 1920s home. Surprisingly, this isn't where she thought she'd end up. I was this nerdy little kid, little fat kid with big glasses and like white hair and white eyelashes and white eyebrows and very quiet and shy. And I couldn't make a fifth grade book report. And I stood up three days in front of the class and nothing would come out. So my mother, coming from a family of attorneys and debaters, was no child of mine, is not going to be able to make a book report. So she enrolled me in drama school, and my sister too, just to sort of bring us out, never realizing she would get stuck with actors in the family. Everywhere you look here, there are unique little treasures that, Chotskys. Seem, Chotskys, <laughs> that seem to talk about part of your life. Well, they do. I've sort of accumulated all over the place from different countries and from my folks. And I mean, here you can see some of my big loves, my Marilyn's, and then my two Nureyev's because I'm a ballet fanatic. And this one in the corner, you can't see it very well, but Rudy signed for me backstage at the Met, uh, you know, 25 years ago. And this is Marilyn up here? Uh, this yes. is the pensive Marilyn that I carried around in my notebook for years. The pink couch is pretty interesting. See, the pink couch, I, when I saw this couch, because it's a traditional sort of guy couch kind of thing that you would usually see in black leather or something, but it's in pink linen. I thought it was so strange. I, I like things that amuse me. Morgan's home is alive with her eclectic collection of memories, including photos of family and loved ones. One dear friend stands out, the late British actor Roddy McDowell. We did uh, Robin Hood together in England. I have pictures together there. And, and we did a movie just before I went to New York, which was the last time we worked together. So he was always taking pictures, and it was a lot of fun. But again, you know, once people have passed, then you really treasure some of the things that, that you have of theirs. Morgan's passion for collecting ranges from rare Limoges china to prehistoric fossils. Science has always fascinated her. I started off wanting to be a doctor, and so in the third grade when all the other little girls were reading Nancy Drew, I was reading biographies of Jenner and Lister and all the guys. And um, I just thought that's what I would do, but I kept my hand in. And so when the AIDS epidemic broke, I'd been following it really since 80. And so when Rock Hudson got sick, um, you know, suddenly I was the only actor they had that can go on television and explain in layman's terms what a retrovirus is and how it works. Are you a bargain hunter? Oh, I am such a bargain hunter. Yes, I love it. I, you know, I'm just one of those people that hates the market. I'm always looking for a deal, a deal. Um, and, but, you know, just putting it all together. Color is so important. It just, it cushions you. And as a woman, you want something that also makes you look good. And so I think the light peaches here and everything would look good for any woman. You sit here in a dining room and every woman's going to look good in this light peach background. <laughs> Morgan rarely entertains in her lovely home. The star truly values her private time. I've always been a loner, uh, which again is against type with the kind of parts that I play and, and sometimes the public perception. But uh, I, I'm very much a loner, and some of my friends know it's like pulling teeth to get me to go to a party or something. Uh, when, you're, when you're doing a show and you have a show, you get your arm twisted so much to go everywhere and show up and do all this stuff. And when I don't have to, I am such a bum. I'm here in my workout clothes with no makeup, just being a bum. I love being a bum. <laughs> and I see that here in the kitchen you have kind of indulged your blue period. Well, my mother collected Flow Blue, and one of her friends for a wedding present for me gave me a Flow Blue plate, started me on my road to blue and white mania. And, and so I put them all up. Again, a lot of these were ones my mother had and she'd never put out, so it's homage to mom. Morgan is legendary for her roles as glamorous, strong-willed, and often conniving women. It's a Hollywood image that's hard to shake. 
thoughtful isn't something they seem to think of when they're looking at me on the casting. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd love to play a doctor. I'd love to play an attorney. I come from a family of attorneys. I think I'd be really good at it, but somehow they don't usually seem to see it that way. Um, yeah, I spent the whole summer researching a script. I was doing a bioterrorism. I wish I could get cast the way my interests go, you know, as a foreign correspondent, as an attorney, as a doctor, as a researcher, something like that. Got a great view from here, too. This is quite wonderful. Oh, thanks. Do you come out here and just sort of relax and soak it all up? Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice place to come out and just have some coffee or tea or read the newspaper or whatever. It's, it's, it's comfortting, which is what I like. <laughs> Read some of those books on paleontology. <laughs> She's living the good life, and she deserves it. Morgan.